In the first shots we see a woman named Edie, who on the advice of her sister decided to see a therapist. Edie looks depressed, it is very difficult for her to contact people now. She does not want to involve anyone in her problems, and is alone with her grief. To cope with the heartache, Edie decided to go far from the city, to a secluded place. She arranged to rent a cabin. Sister Emma kept calling her, so Edie threw her phone in a trash. It was a long journey, but Edie is determined. She was surrounded by beautiful scenery. Soon Edie pulled off the main road to go deeper into the woods. Finally the road came to an end. Landlord Colt showed her the grounds. Surrounding the cabin were hunting grounds and a nature preserve. Edie asked Colt for a favor. She needed someone to move her car. In Colt's opinion, staying here without a car was a bad idea, but Edie assured him she could handle it. Finally, Edie was all alone. She looked around the cabin and the barn, where the gun lay. Until late at night, Edie dragged her things into the house. There was no electricity in the cabin, so she had to use a flashlight. At night Edie could not sleep because of the sounds of nature, which seemed frightening to her. In the morning she decided to tidy up the cabin. She only has can food with her. Edie had to chop her own firewood. She was very bad at it, and the woman even rubbed blisters on her palms. She recalls how the sister tried to convince her to live together. Edie does not understand why she is still alive. It seems to her to be the most horrible torture. While Edie cried, Emma hugged her. The next day Edie went to get water. River flow was very strong, the canister was carried away, and Edie had to jump into the water to catch it. As promised, Colt found a man who agreed to drive her car away. Edie decided to go fishing, remembering how her son and husband had done it too. Later, she strolled through the woods, continuing to sink into the memories. At home, Edie was going to melt the stove. She felt like the sun was hugging her. During the night a thunderstorm and rain began to fall, and the roof was leaking. During the day the rain continued. Edie saw her beloved husband in front of her, who was no longer there. When she went to bed, she still felt like he was there. Edie couldn't hold back the tears. The next day she continued to tidy up and found the box, but she never dared to open it. At night Edie heard wild animals running around the house. It was getting colder, and it was snowing. When Edie went to the toilet, she heard growling outside. Through the gap between the boards she saw a huge bear. Edie was very frightened, and the beast went into the cabin. After a while Edie dared to come out. Everything in the cabin was upside down, and the bear had eaten almost all the food. Edie had to make a fire outside to keep warm. There wasn't much food left, so Edie set a trap, hoping to catch some small animal. Despite the cold, she was fishing. It became easier for her to chop wood, but the stove wasn't saving her from cold. In addition, the last can of canned food was over. Edie had no choice but to take her gun and go hunting in the woods. Suddenly she saw two moose, but she had no luck. Edie returned to the cabin in tears, realizing that she was left here without food all alone. Edie didn't want to live anymore, but she remembered her sister, and it gave her strength. Emma was the only person who kept Edie from doing something rash. She'd managed to find some food, but it wasn't enough. The night got even colder. Lying on the floor, Edie remembered her happy family. Suddenly the wind woke her up. A terrible snowstorm began, but Edie went outside anyway. When she came back, she was completely exhausted. Edie lay motionless on the cold floor for a long time. Suddenly there was a knock at the door. But it was not her beloved husband, but some stranger. He called for help. The man and woman brought Edie to her senses and warmed her up. While the woman cared for her, the man taped up the windows. They also stayed in the cabin for the night and stoked the stove. Edie came to her senses. Her rescuers' names were Miguel and Alava. It turns out that Alava is a nurse. They convince Edie to go to the doctor, but she refuses. Alava has to go back to town. Miguel promised that he would stay and look after Edie. He decided to spend the night in his car, and in the morning he made breakfast and helped Edie get up. She was having a hard time eating, so Miguel started spoon-feeding her. In the afternoon Edie fell asleep again, and when she had recovered her strength, decided to get to know her savior. It turned out that he was out hunting and noticed the smoke from the chimney. When Miguel returned, the smoke was gone, and this seemed suspicious to him. Later Miguel went into town to buy food. Edie was already feeling much better. In the afternoon Miguel chopped firewood, it was getting warmer outside. Edie was finally able to wash properly. In the evening Alava paid them a visit. She still insists on being hospitalized, but since Edie again refused to go to the hospital, Alava took her tests right here. Alava worries about why Edie is alone in this cabin without a cell phone. Edie replied that it was her conscious choice. 
After a while Miguel brought back the results of the tests. Edie's health was perfectly fine. She invited her new acquaintance for coffee and thanked him for his kindness. Edie confessed that she came here because she didn't want to be around people. Edie wanted to give Miguel money, but he refused to accept them. Miguel offered to teach her how to hunt, and Edie decided to accept the offer. She also asked him not to tell her anything about the outside world. Hunting lessons began. At first Edie didn't succeed, but she wasn't going to give up. In addition to hunting, Edie and Miguel went fishing. Edie was also able to strengthen the roof of the hut. That day they went hunting together again. This time Edie succeeded in getting the game. Miguel showed her what to do with it. They dragged the elk to the cabin. Edie learned how to set traps and already hunted game on her own. Now she slept soundly at night and read books during the day, adding to her knowledge of nature. On a warm day, Edie began to loosen the ground to plant a vegetable garden. Miguel visited her again. This time he brought his dog Potter. Edie confessed that during the week Miguel had been away, she had not said a word. Later, they went into the woods to pick berries. Miguel told her that he was in charge of water reservations for people who did not have access to running water. When Edie asked if he had any family, Miguel said that his wife and daughter had died in a car accident eight years earlier. Edie said she had a family too. Toward evening, they roasted meat over a fire. Miguel asked his friend to tell how she saw her future. All Edie wants now is one thing, to be closer to nature. At some point Edie realized that Miguel tried to find out something about her through the internet. She didn't like it very much, so she left for the cabin. In the evening Edie sat by the fire alone. Soon Miguel arrived again and invited her to go hunting. Edie asked his forgiveness for her behavior. During the day they wandered through the woods in search of game, and in the evening they sang an old song by the fire. One day Miguel hands her a drawing of his niece. The girl thinks her uncle made up a recluse friend who lives in the mountains. Edie decided to prove to the girl that she is real, and decided to give her something in return. After a long time, Edie opened that same box. She pulled out a paper and handed it to Miguel. He said that he would have to go away for a long time, and asked her look after Potter. Left alone, Edie opened the box again. There were pictures of her happy family. Miguel stopped the car to unfold the paper. It turned out to be a child's drawing. Looking at the pictures, Edie cried. She misses her son and husband very much. Edie also cherishes Emma, who has always supported her. Edie decided against all odds to hang the pictures and drawings on the wall. In the evening she took a bath outdoors. There was not a soul around. Edie continued to lead a life away from people, feeling at peace of mind. Her only company was Potter. Edie was in complete unity with nature. So day after day passed. Edie didn't want to go back to her old life, because she felt much more alone among people than here. The only one she really missed was Miguel. A long time passed and he still wasn't back. Edie was worried, so she took everything she needed with her and decided to hit the road. She walked along the river and trees, Potter following faithfully behind her. Finally Edie got out on the road, and then she reached the town on foot. Everything here was already alien to her. Despite her anxiety, she went into a cafe and asked the waitress if there was a hospital nearby. Edie paid a visit there and went to the front desk, asking if a nurse named Alava worked here. The last time Edie had seen her was two years ago. Alava went down the hall and was very surprised to see the old acquaintance. She took her to Miguel's house. Edie knocked and the door was opened by his late wife's sister. It turned out that Miguel was seriously ill. He really hoped that his friend would come down from the mountain to visit him after all. Miguel had throat cancer, which he didn't notice in time. And then it was too late. He was very happy to see his friend and thanked her for everything. Edie could not hold back her tears, for Miguel was the one who had given her the will to live. If it wasn't for him, she wouldn't have wanted to stay in this world. Miguel asked Edie to pick up his phone, because all his favorite music is on it. They held hands. Miguel said that he had been driving at the moment of the accident. He had been drinking a lot at the time. Edie in turn said that her husband Adam and son Drew died during the concert. Some man opened fire. Miguel cried. After thanking him and Alava, Edie left. She sat on the swing until morning. For the first time in a long time, Edie used the phone and called Emma. The sister couldn't believe she was hearing her voice again.